My name is Nani Moon and I teach carpentry classes and tool use classes with Wild Abundance and today we are going to be talking about the plumb bob, one of the most ancient and still most precise measuring tools to make sure that something in the building is straight up and down. We're going to be talking about the difference between plumbness, meaning straight up and down or vertical straightness, and level, meaning horizontal straightness. Then we're going to be talking about what is a plumb bob and how to use it. And then we're going to talk about some different styles of plumb bobs or how you can make your own on the spot if you don't have one available to you. Um, whenever you're building something, straight lines are usually a must have, but straight line in itself is not enough. If it's oriented in some wonky ways, you'll end up with a sloped wall or a sloped floor. This is where leveling or plumbing tools come in. There is the level, which is a wonderful and handy tool to establish level over a short distance in the horizontal plane or over a short distance in the vertical plane. And there is the plumb bob, which has a really, 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 really long line attached to it that I need to unravel. So you have a lot more flexibility with this tool to measure things straight up and down because you have a way, 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 way longer reference line. What is a plumb bob? This is a plumb bob looks a little bit like a divine pendulum. <laughs> Could certainly be used as one, but we're gonna be using it for carpentry. The tool has its name from the Latin word plumbum, which is the Latin word for lead, a heavy metal that back in the day used to be used for this weight at the end of the string of this tool. It's a very, very, very simple yet very effective tool. It's just a heavy weight, in my case it's brass, at the end of a long, 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 long string to establish vertical plumb. The way it's set up is generally the same. You'll find them in all different kinds and shapes in the hardware store. This top part here unscrews and you can attach any length of string, any length of string depending on the kind of project that you're working at at the end of the tool. Now that we know what it is and what it's used for, let's go out in field and try it out. All right, the first example that we're going to be looking at is this wonderful post here in this timber frame. Um, I already put a nail for us into this post because we can't just put the tool straight up against it since the tool itself has some width. So in general, it is usually put out a few inches from the top of the piece that you're trying to reference against on a nail. Some of them come with an actual attachment that you could drive the stake into the wall, but a simple old nail works just as fine. What you do is you let gravity do its work and slowly, slowly, slowly let the plumb bob find its way as far down as you possibly can without touching any obstacles at the bottom. And now you give it a few wraps just to make sure that it doesn't get itself loose. And then you just meditate for a moment and wait until it's done doing its thing. If it takes too long, or if it's really windy outside, you can use your hands to just give it a little bit, a gentle touch until it's coming to full standstill. I'm gonna grab my tape measure. So when you are trying to establish plumb, you're measuring at the top of your line, the distance between your line and the object that you're refer referencing against, and you will do the same thing at the bottom. In our case, we are at two and a half inches from the inside of the line and at the bottom we are at two and a half inches on the inside of the line meaning that if this tool works which is as simple as it is it should that this post is in this orientation straight up and down vertical or plumb let's see what the level says Whoop. Look straight up and down to me. Plumb bobs are especially awesome when we're trying to plumb extremely irregular surfaces like this very wonderful snaky locust pose here. As you can see, it would be virtually impossible to put the level on the side of this pose to try and establish any sort of wonderful plumbness. You could still use the center line that I snapped before I erected this post. I'll get, a, I'll get back to that in a little moment but you see that you would only be measuring a short section of this post, so especially when you come to really, really, really long applications, the plumb bob, again, really, really shines. Um, 
in this particular case here where we've set these locust posts for this deck when they were still on the ground before erecting them i marked a center line on the top and the bottom of this post in a cross and then snapped the line in this vertical plane and i snapped the line in this vertical plane so that we can use the plumb bob against it to, pl to plumb our post when we set it. Whoops. Again, I've set a nail in the top of this post and it's kind of the same spiel as we already did over with the straight up and down yellow pine post. We're just gonna have a look at how it looks against the chalk line, cause it's fun. And we're using the tool here slightly different. You can see that I'm not attaching the tool and measuring the top and bottom distance because this is an irregular surface, so we cannot measure against the side. Right now we're measuring it in the visual line, looking through the plumb bob line onto this chalk line and making sure that it is not out in this way. Since there is two sides, I mean, there's lots of sides, this thing is round, but since there is two main planes to this post here, I would generally establish plumb on one side. And as you can see here, this piece is braced, brace it in that plane and then move on to the next side, the side that I just demonstrated, establish plumb in that way as well. And then you can set your post and you're all done. Lastly, I want to show you a couple neat tricks that you can use with a plumb bob if you're in really strange territory or if you just want to impress your coworkers. Trick number one is you're on a very steep hillside and you're trying to see if this post that's sitting in the middle of the field or any other thing that is very, very hard to reach is plumb. It's not going to be so easy to slack up a ladder that hill, try and put a nail in, put a chalk line on there. You want to be able to just kind of see is this thing barely plumb and as far as I can tell and the plumb bob is a wonderful tool to use in that scenario as well. What you do is you basically position yourself and the plumb bob and the object that you're trying to establish plumb in one line and you're eyeing through your line holding it about two feet away from you you're eyeing through your line and you're looking at your object and it's, ex it's extremely incredible to see how much you can tell by just eyeing through this vertical line. Lastly, and as a big shout out to the simplicity of this tool, I want to show you that you can make a plumb bob with pretty much anything. Anything that's a little bit heavy and if you find a length of string, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can just take your object, in this case it's a heavy nut, at the end of your string and tie it on there firmly. And there you go, here is your DIY 15 second plumb bob for nothing. <laughs> you can also go to the hardware store and buy one of those for five to 10 bucks and you just have to attach your length of string to it. Um, I got mine at a flea market. If you have a chalk line laying around at home, it also doubles wonderfully as a plumb bob. That's a heavy weight at the end of a long line. So as you can see, the simplicity of this tool and the way that it just simply uses gravity to plumb things makes it for a very affordable and also easily improv improvisable option. I hope that you enjoyed and learned a lot and feel great about making sure that things are straight up and down.